This first lesson is entitled, What are Drones? So we will be learning a great deal about different types of drone technology. First of all, drones are for fun. These are called micro drones that you see in this photo. These micro drones weigh less than 0.55 pounds. They do not need to be registered with the FAA. The very small micro drones that you see in the person's hand are somewhere between $20 and $40. The white drone at the bottom, the Tello drone, cost about $100. Secondly, drones are for business. This is a DJI Inspire 2 drone. It's a very, very large drone that weighs around seven pounds. It must be registered with the FAA. It is used for high-end photography and videography like what is shot with Hollywood movies. So a lot of movies that you've seen drone photography on was shot with a drone similar to this. It can fly 60 miles per hour or more. It has multiple sensors on it to help it uh, avoid running into things around it. Drones are also used for different types of business. This is a smaller drone but an extremely powerful drone, one of the smartest drones in the world. This is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone. It weighs around three pounds. It has one of the best cameras on any drone in the world on board. It can shoot in 20 megapixel digital images and also 4K uh, video uh, photography. It must be registered with the FAA, so it is used by high-end photography and professional pilots. I currently own a Mavic 2 Pro. It is my work drone for now, so it is very powerful. It has sensors all around it, so it can see up and down and left and right to avoid hitting things. It can fly 45 miles per hour and up to five miles away. Drones are also used for agriculture. This is a fixed wing drone. It weighs around three pounds. It must be registered with the FAA and it is used for mapping farm fields. It does have GPS locators on this drone. They are hidden, you don't see it in this image. So it does hook to multiple satellites in outer space to know where its position is. It can fly 45 miles per hour and up to five miles away or even farther. The good thing about this drone is it's very efficient in the air. So its batteries last for 45 to 60 minutes. Drones are also used for inspections and safety. This is a DJI Matrice drone, very large drone. It weighs around 12 pounds. It can be even heavier, depending on its payload. It must be registered with the FAA. It is often used for inspections of buildings and bridges. As you can see, it has multiple cameras on it. So there's a camera on the top that allows it to fly under a bridge and look up and inspect the bridge for cracks and defaults. On the, the camera on the bottom, you can see is an infrared camera that is used to inspect power lines and also helps firefighters with fires and inspecting fires in a building. This drone can cost $10,000 or more. Uh, it does have several other cameras on it. It has very precise satellite uh, connection that can get it down to less than one millimeter in precision of knowing where it's at 
on planet Earth. So it's a very, very precise drone used by inspectors and safety experts. Drones are also used for the battlefield. If we would have talked about drones 20 years ago, and I said the word drone, most people would think of this image of a military drone. This very large aircraft it is the size of a small jet. It is only flown by the United States military. It is often used for reconnaissance or delivery of weapon fire. So there can be weapons mounted on this drone. It can see in the dark with infrared cameras. You can see a camera bay up in the nose cone of this drone. Remember, there is no one on board this drone. Okay, even though it's large enough that you could have a pilot on board, there is no one on board. This drone is flown hundreds, if not thousands of miles around planet Earth from a remote location. And, of course, it's hooked to satellites, so it knows where it's at in, on planet Earth. And there is a remote pilot flying this drone from a military base. And this drone could go across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it could uh, take pictures of where it needs to take pictures of and then come back and land here in the United States. The next type of drone is drones that are used for racing. This is a professional racing drone. It is only used by race pilots. It takes a lot of practice to fly one of these drones because they do not use GPS location or obstacle avoidance technology. So you can easily run them into something else. They do not uh, have a building system for uh, st stabilization by themselves. You are flying this drone every single second. On some of the other drones, you can let go of the controls and the quadcopter drone will just hover in place until you take control of it again. Not this drone. This drone you're flying every single second. It is used for competitions all around the world. These drones fly very fast, up to 100 miles per hour. Uh, you fly this drone a little bit differently because they are so fast, you really can't just look at the drone and fly them. So you have to put on a set of goggles called FPV goggles, first person view goggles. And the goggles are connected through a video link to the camera that you see at the very top of this drone. So it gives you the perspective of being on board the drone. So all you see is what the camera sees and you have to go through different obstacles and gates uh, around a large stadium, perhaps like Lucas Oil Stadium or other locations that they fly these drones all over planet Earth in competition. You can see some of these FPV drone racing competitions on ESPN television. The next section I would like to talk about are what are the rules about drones here in the United States. In the US, drones are governed by the FAA, the Federal Aeronautics Administration. There are two categories of drone pilots. The recreational drone pilot, this is someone who will go to Best Buy or some other shop or maybe online, and they purchase a drone and they fly it in their backyard. These drone pilots, uh, recreational pilots, are very restricted on where they are allowed to fly their drone. Certain places, you are not allowed to fly them. The second type of pilot is a professional drone pilot, often called a Part 107 or UAV pilot, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Pilot. And to become a professional pilot, you must be at least 16 years of age, and you have to pass a pilot's test, which is very, very hard to do. All drones fly in the airspace here in the United States 
that's controlled by the FAA. So the FAA owns all the air from the grass all the way to outer space here in the United States, all the airspace. So if someone says, you know, you can't fly over my house, legally a drone pilot can do that as long as you are not invading someone's privacy and causing a problem, you can do that just like a helicopter, a small airplane, or a jet can fly over someone's property. The recreational drone pilot is limited, as I mentioned, where they can fly. The professional drone pilot has more privileges in where they're allowed to fly. All drones share airspace with manned aircraft. So we have to be very careful and we have to yield to any manned aircraft, like a helicopter, like a, a, a winged aircraft, both a jet or propeller driven aircraft. All drones must stay out of their way. The next section is going to talk about how drones are controlled. Most drones are controlled by a radio transmitter. You see several types of these on this slide. Depending on the cost and the abilities of the drone, the transmitter may be very complicated. Most of these controllers have two joysticks. The left stick controls up and down, uh, controls the throttle, the speed of the drone's propellers, so it makes it go up or come back down, and the heading of the drone, whether you're turning it to the left or you're turning it to the right. The right hand joystick controls forward and back and then left and right orientation of the drone. To control a drone and avoid crashes, it's very important to move these joysticks very smoothly. Most drone pilots that have crashes get into very jerky, quick reactions. You don't want to do that. You want to have a very smooth transition with these joysticks. They're very touchy and can move the drone very quickly if you have to. So you need to know the limits of the drone and of course practice a lot. There are several computerized flight simulators where you can learn to fly a drone prior to actually flying one. This gives you a lot of practice, especially with the race drones, because the race drones are so hard to fly, you will crash them a lot, and they are expensive. So most race drone pilots practice using a simulator on a computer. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about the world of aviation and especially the world of drones. Throughout this unit, we will be learning a little bit about each type of these drones and can show you how these drones fly.